means 6,000 billion trees on Earth, and half of it has disappeared. It means that uh, today there's about 400 trees per person. And uh, every year, about 10 billion trees are being cut, are disappearing. Um, if every people on Earth would plant uh, one, uh, 150 trees, it would reforest the one, uh, one part, one important part of the lost zone, but it would also, it would also cover one fourth of human made CO2. So our idea is to connect technologies and see how our technologies can help us reconnect with nature, connecting citizen, nature, and technology. And the idea is to use drones, first to protect uh, areas and to protect forests, then to reforest, and third, to monitor the evolution of those forests. Ah, so here we are. Sorry. So we have a use case, which is in Casamance, uh, where we already did some tests uh, last year. And today the idea is to connect the different steps and different elements that were isolated and to see how we can have a full answer to the, uh, the question, to the problem. So first of all, we uh, deal about protecting the forest using drones. And deforestation is responsible for about 17% of uh, CO2 emission. So uh, we decided to use a system that uh, listened to the sounds of the forest uh, that is developed by an American NGO, which is called Rainforest Connection. And in fact, we put phones inside the forest. And as soon as they hear a uh, noise, they send directly an alarm. And the concept is to send directly a drone to that zone so that we can actually see who is cutting a tree and making it visible. Because in fact, when it's totally invisible, Nobody does anything, but as soon as you see it, you can share it on social network, you can give the information to the police, and then it's going to start to be less comfortable to cut trees. So that is the first step. Okay. <laughs> so these are the, the first tests who ha that have been made last year, I mean, no, this summer in Senegal. And we managed to have a very good feedback from the system. And then, but it's not connected with drone yet. It, it has been uh, not automated. So the second part is to deal about uh, damaged area and to reforest them with drones. So here with the team, we have been thinking about a system uh, to first to analyze the, the ground, but then to use a fleet of drones to uh, cover entire zones. So here you're gonna see a little video of the simulation of the, those fleets using several drones that carry each of them a series of different seeds to generate uh, local forests with local species. And like birds, in fact, they drop their seeds and they help reforesting zones that have lost biodiversity. Because in fact, once you lose biodiversity, there's less animals and those animals don't bring seeds anymore. So in fact, the, the nature doesn't regenerate the same way anymore. So the idea is to use those technologies to somehow replace what we've destroyed. Then uh, we developed uh, also with mechanical engineers who were part of our workshop, the system to drop the different seeds that have different uh, size. And in fact, they thought about a system that is quite smart because it doesn't use any electricity, it just uses the power of the wind and, and the motion of the drone to activate that engine that lets the, the seeds drop on the land so we can control also that the percentage of different seeds that are, is coming out and thanks to a very light and, and soft, I mean, um, um, syst a system that doesn't use too much energy. Mm. Okay. Then the monitoring and the concept again is to use the same drones that are gonna fly over different zones uh, with um, trajectories that are totally autonomous because each time the idea is not to uh, have something too complicated, okay, but to have a system that is totally autonomous so that you don't need to control and to, to help people uh, to, to make formations that are too long. And that then the very specific thing about the project is that in fact the idea is to turn the entire project into an alternate rea reality game so that every citizen from all, all over the world can be part of the project and we've been thinking about an application that in fact helps you to log in to decide that you would protect a part of the forest 
And then once, when you decide to do that, you're going to be part of the entire system. So when you receive an alert, you're going to be able to analyze the images, show if someone is actually entering into the forest and has scattered something. You can report it. You can also tweet the information on social network. Then you can also follow the monitoring of the, the forested zone. So you can actually identify biodiversity, trees that are growing. So this, the next steps now uh, is to do the first experimentation of the entire process uh, in Senegal with our partners, and then uh, to develop prototypes and all the different elements. So in fact, we will need to find some funds to do the first steps. And then the second step is to make it um, international, to go all over the world. So the idea is to make it scalable. So we first test it in Senegal, and then we start all over the world. And the idea is to integrate citizens so that they can take care of, of forests. So thank you. Thank you, Nazia. <laughs> Julie, you will introduce.